Hello there, people of Lockdownia. How are you? Um, I, I'm all right. I just decided to uh, to give you a bit of entertainment because somebody uh, was uh, spoke to me about the video and reminded me that I do these occasionally. I guess. Well, that's a small thing. Um, yeah, and as I came out, uh, all the b all the crows took off from all the trees around here, going, "Oh my God, there he is! He's going to fly up and and kill us all." I wouldn't mind, but I actually feed those those ungrateful little birds, uh, little birds, I should say. Yeah, occasionally when I when I've got some bread that's gone stale, I throw it out and they have a big feast. So uh, yeah, <laughs> all I can say is, uh, yeah, it'll be a while before they get any kind of bread from me. Anyway. I'm going to read for you today a slightly controversial poem. Mm, it's good. You know it's going to be good then, don't you? Uh, this is Growl Tiger's Last Stand, and in the show Cats, when I saw it, it was really one of the highlights of the show. It basically involves, uh, you know, sword fighting and uh, and you know people doing somersaults, and basically it's all great fun. But uh, it's but they did a re a, a re uh, I forget what the word is. But basically, they did a kind of re uh, they redid the the show slightly in 2014, and they removed Growl Tiger's Last Stand because it's a tiny bit racist. Ooh. The reason being that it had that that it shows uh, Siamese cats as being Oriental or Asian or whatever way you want to put it, and they said, "Oh, we can't do that. That's terrible." It's going, but the, but the whole thing is, has Growl Tiger, you know, basically chasing them down and killing them all, and they're supposed to be all passive and nice about this. Yeah, guys, um, you know, the whole point was he was he's a bloody pirate, and he goes around killing people, and they get, they're they pissed off about it, so they go on, and they, they return the favor. It's not an, exactly a nice poem anyway, but, you know, killing people is okay, but being a little bit, but saying Siamese cats are Asian, ca are Asian cats, that's bad. Oh, I can't have that. No, 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 no. Which I think is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's not even the central point of the poem, anyway. So, yeah, we'll go to... So, being with that, I am going to uh, recite Growl Tiger's Last Stand, and I'm going to give you a bit of something to read, that is, that, to look at that isn't me. Unfortunately, this is going to involve me lying down, because I ca uh, it's written down on my computer, and I'm not clever enough to print, a, print this stuff out before I actually look, do this for you, so... Yeah, this is good. So I'm going to look slightly ridiculous, but hey, let's see about turning this thing around here. And, uh, yeah, that's not too bad. Okay. Growl Tiger's Last Stand. <clears throat> Growl Tiger was a brave old cat who travelled in a barge. In fact, he was the roughest cat who ever roamed at large. From Gravestart up to Oxford, he pursued his evil aims, rejoicing in his tight love, the terror of the Thames. His manners and appearance did not calculate to please. His coat was raw, torn and seedy. He was baggy at the knees. One ear was somewhat missing, no need to tell you why, and he scowled upon a hostile world from one forbidding eye. The courtiers of Rotherhide knew something of his fame. At Hammersmith and Putney, people shuddered at his name. They would fortify the henhouse, lock up the silly goose. When the rumour ran along the shore, growl tigers on the loose. Woe to the weak canary that fluttered from his cage. Woe to the pampered pecanese that faced growl tiger's rage. Woe to the beastly bandicoot that lurks on foreign ships. And woe to any cat with whom growl tiger came to grips. But to most, but most to cats of foreign race his hatred had been vowed. To cats of foreign name and race no quarter was allowed. The Persian and the Siamese regarded him with fear because it was a Siamese that mauled his missing ear. Now, on a peaceful summer night, all nature seemed at play. The tender moon was shining bright, the barge at Mosley lay. All in the balmy f moonlight it lay rocking on the, on the tide, and Growl Tiger was disposed to show his sentimental side. His buccinate grumble skin had long since had disappeared, for to the bell at Hampton he had gone to wet his beard. At his boatswain tumble Brutus, he... Oh, sorry, one second. Uh, I lost my place here. Uh, yeah, I really lost my place here. Do, 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 do. Right. And his boatswain tumble Brutus, he too had stolen away. In the yard behind the lion he was prowling for his prey. In the forepeak of the vessel, growled Tiger, sate alone, 
concentrating his attention on the Lady Griddlebone and his roughish crew were sleeping in their barrows and their bunks as the Siamese came creeping in their saipans and their junks. Growl Tiger had no ear for aught but Grizzle Griddlebone and the Lady seemed enraptured by his manly baritone. Disposed to relaxation and awaiting no surprise, but the moonlight shone reflected from a thousand bright blue eyes. And closer still and closer the Siam pan circled round, and yet from all the enemy there was not heard a sound. The lovers sang their last duet in danger of their lives, for the foe was armed with toasting forks and cruel carving knives. Then Gilbert gave the signal to his fierce Mongolian horde, with a frightful burst of fireworks, the chinks they swarmed aboard. Abandoning their sampans, their pullaways and junks, they battened down the hatches on the crew within their bunks. Then Griddlebone she gave a screech, for she was badly skeered, and I'm sorry to admit it, she quickly disappeared. She probably escaped with ease, I'm sure she didn't drown. But a serried ring of flashing sea steel ground tiger did surround. The ruthless foe pressed forward, its stubborn rank on rank. Growl Tiger, to his vast surprise, was forced to walk the plank. He who a hundred victims had given to that drop, at the end of all his crimes he was forced to go, ker-flip, ker-flop. Oh, there was joy in whapping when the news flew through the land. At Maidenhead and Henley there was dancing on the strand. Rats were roasted whole at Bradford and at Victoria Dock and a day was celebration was commanded in Bangkok. That's it. Sorry about the interruption in the middle, but uh, I pressed page up rather than pay, rather than uh, die down, so I went up a page. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Take care of yourselves. I will talk to you soon.